Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm going to basically be showing you the full complete guide for open broadcast software, aka OBS. I'm going to show you the best settings, which encoder to use, and how you can stream on different PC setups, and what things lower your FPS within OBS, and what things introduce input lag, and what things increase FPS or minimize input lag in OBS. So before we do anything, basically the easiest way to basically record and game or stream and game without any hiccups it's basically get an nvidia gpu if you don't have an nvidia gpu it's going to be really hard to record and stream unless you're using some sort of other encoder that's built into your gpu and this is mostly for amd cards they have a specific encoder that isn't supported by twitch which is an issue but for recording it's pretty great and for nvidia you're pretty much able to do recording streaming all of that perfectly fine again obviously it depends on your gpu but nvidia encoder is way 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 more developed than than any other encoder that is out there so highly 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 recommend if you don't have an nvidia gpu or if you want to get into content or streaming and you don't have an nvidia gpu get an nvidia gpu as soon as possible and you don't need anything crazy at least a 30 series nowadays is perfectly fine for most games especially for games like fortnite especially games like valorant call of duty you might want to get a better gpu but again it depends on the use case and it depends on what you're going to do with your pc let's make another thing clear using obs studio is way better than using streamlabs for your in-game performance streamlabs obs does come with a lot of extensions and layouts and all this stuff that does hinder your performance for in-game gameplay so if possible use obs normally if you can't do that for whatever reason the same settings also apply they're just in different locations so without further ado let's get right into the best obs settings for streaming and recording so as you guys can see i have obs open right here and we're pretty much going to get into the sources kind of settings so before we do anything make sure you have your sources set basically add your display capture add your game capture but if you're going to be streaming a game or recording a game always always use game capture display capture is going to lower your fps a lot more than game capture so always use game capture but for your game capture just double click on it and make sure you have limit capture frame rate checked if you want to record like overlays like your geforce experience overlay or your amd relive overlay or steam or any overlays you had to click this otherwise just leave it unchecked and press ok that's really important to select limit Limit capture frame rate just make sure it's selected and then one thing else that you could do in here once you got all your sources correctly and it's fully scaled like how it is right here all you have to do is right click on this click enable preview make sure the preview is disabled disabling the preview does actually give you less input lag and more fps so as soon as you're done like checking out the stuff within your sources and scaling them up to the window disable the preview it's going to save you a lot more fps and it's going to feel a lot better so make sure you do that now we're going to head over to the settings and all we're going to do is go to advanced and when I scroll down when I leave all this other stuff alone scroll all the way down make sure you have enable browser source hardware acceleration unchecked and then press apply and then you're going to go to video and you're just going to set this to the monitor's resolution and then change your output to the monitor's resolution as well common fps values change that to 60 that's pretty much it nothing too crazy nothing too complicated just do that that's all you got to do for output we're going to go straight to output go to streaming make sure the output mode is set to advanced and go to streaming your encoder you're going to choose nvidia h264 now if you're on amd you're kind of in a tough position there is there should be an encoder called av1 you can test that one out but again for twitch and a lot of other streaming platforms av1 is not supported so you have to check around see which platform supports av1 stream on there but for recording 100 use av1 but for streaming you just can't stream perfectly on an amd gpu you can try x264 and x264 basically is your cpu but at the other end a lot of your games that you're playing nowadays is going to need a lot of cpu resources so you want your cpu mainly used for the game and you want like for example the nvidia encoder or your gpu encoding stuff while you're gaming so that's why if you don't have a nvidia gpu go out and get one get a used one just get one that has a decent vram size and all that basically a 3060 for fortnite perfectly fine again you don't need anything crazy for cpu intensive games but just make sure you get a nvidia gpu if you want to be able to stream 100 percent perfectly on a single pc setup then you just change your bitrate depending on your upload speed 
speed. This highly depends on your upload speed. If you have low upload, like lower than 10, you cannot stream perfectly. It's going to be horrible. Trust me, I used to be in that position. You can't really stream on there. If you have 10, I tested around today with streaming. 4,000 was the perfect spot for me. I could probably push it even higher, but you can test around with this. The max for Twitch is like 6,500, somewhere around that. So if you have really good upload, just do like 6,500. But again, I think you can go higher on different platforms. So you just have to check it out for that. So yeah, this just depends on your upload speed. I'm going to leave mine on 4,000 and leave it alone. Now press apply on the bottom right. Make sure that all those settings apply. Now I'm going to go to a recording and this is for recording videos. This is not for streaming. It's for recording videos and for using replay buffer. If you decide to use replay buffer recording, same thing, same principle as streaming. You just want to set the video encoder to your GPU. And as you can see, AV1 is an option. So use that if you're on AMD and you can do some more research on that. I don't have much information on how AV1 works or how it is on AMD GPUs. All I know is if you're on an AMD GPU, that's the best encoder you got and you got nothing else unless you upgrade to an NVIDIA. It is what it is. And that's what happens when if you pay a lower price for a product, you get less features. So it is what it is. Now keep that selected. And yeah, bitrate. This honestly depends on how big you want your recordings and how big you want your clips. So 50,000 is about 50 megabytes. I just use the default as if I was using GeForce Experience. For example, the default bitrate in GeForce Experience is 50 megabytes for 1080p. This is the same thing that I'm using here and it's on, also on 1080p. For qualities, I'm using basically the highest around there. So this just depends on your PC. Obviously, that's around with the bitrate. Going a little bit too high is just going to make the clips way, way, way too big. So make sure you set like a reasonable bitrate. I'd say 10,000 is a good place to start. Start increasing from there or decreasing from there. But yeah, make sure you're also saving your recordings on a hard drive. You do not want to be saving your recordings on your SSD. Your SSD is mainly for gaming unless you have a really, really big SSD. If you have a secondary hard drive and an SSD that's 500 gigs or 200 gigs, save your clips, save your recordings on the hard drive. Don't save them on the SSD. You're going to be just wasting space on the SSD that could be used for games and all that stuff. So make sure you do that. And all you do is just click browse and then you choose like a different drive from one of your drives. So yeah, then press apply and we're going to head over to general and just uncheck automatically check for updates. I don't want it checking up for updates every time I start it up. That should be pretty much it for the OBS settings. All you want to do is right after you're done, just press apply and then press OK. It's going to ask you to restart your OBS if you disable one of the other settings. Just press yes on that and it should restart. But that's going to be pretty much the best settings for OBS. If you want to look at your stats while you're streaming and make sure you're not dropping frames or any of that, just click on docs and click on stats and it will show you these information right here. So drop frames, all that stuff. CPU usage, disk space available, memory usage, all that stuff. You can look at it here. Drop frame is going to happen because of packet loss or your internet. It just depends on that. If you have packet loss, contact your internet provider. Not much else you can do other than that. That's going to be pretty much it for these OBS settings. And if you are able now to stream perfectly fine with no hiccups, comment down below and like this video. But that's going to be pretty much it. If you guys want a full PC optimization service where you get lower input lag basically with anything that you're doing while streaming, while recording, your whole computer is going to get lower latency. Head over to the link in the description. I work with players like Uga. And if you want a PC completely custom built for you, optimized for you, and tested completely before you even get it, go to the second link in the description and buy a PC that's completely customized by me from that link. Other than that, guys, that's going to be pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.